Hi, I'm Mark Vernarelli, and welcome to Inside Hartford County, a program where we sit down with our community leaders and discuss the issues important to the citizens of Hartford County. It's Wednesday, May 15th already, and we're airing tonight live from the Hartford TV studio, and you can give us a call at 638-3894 if you want to join our discussion. And the discussion tonight is one of the hottest topics in Hartford County, or probably just about anywhere, and that's land development, how commercial projects like apartments get approved, and how the county government plans for and regulates overall land use. With us tonight to take a deeper dive into these issues is Harford County Executive Bob Castley and Shane Grimm, the Director of Planning and Zoning. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Sir, I'll say to you this thing I always say, which is, first of all, thanks for making yourself available on a regular basis to the citizens of Harford County. We really appreciate Mark, that. Mark, it's good to be here again. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you do for it's, us. It's great to have you. <laughs> Shane, it's been a while since we've been here. You've had, we've had you, the pleasure of having you on a couple times, and we're excited to hear about your job and I'm afraid I won't be able to comprehend it all because it's a lot. <laughs> Sir, let's start with you, sure. uh, Mr. County Executive, <clears throat> and talk about how your administration views development, land development and land use. I know you have public yeah. safety, you have myriad other issues, e right. economics, but have a feeling that land use is pretty high on your list. Sure, land use is, is very high on, on everybody's list. and I, I'm guided by my overall philosophy in government, which is do the right thing. Do what the citizens expect you to do. Uh, my, my pledge to the citizens in land use matters is to first provide for an open and transparent process. No hide anything. Everything happens right up above board. Uh, I, we need to protect our quality of life. Uh, we got to protect property rights. And we want to provide for the housing stock for the young families coming in and the new businesses coming in. Uh, and, and in doing that, though, we've got we to recognize that uh, Prime developable land is, is not an infinite quantity. We've got to be careful in what we do. It's a precious commodity. And so we've got to focus on quality over quantity in, as, as we uh, build in Hartford County. We've got to be careful that uh, the high-density housing, apartments and the like, is, is uh, in areas that are, that are set aside for high-density resi residential development. You don't want to put apartments where we don't already have the services, the infrastructure, high-density housing needs, needs bus lines, it needs more public services, it needs libraries and all that stuff. And when you build those sort of things out in the more rural areas, then you either don't service those people, which isn't a good option, or you have to spend a lot of taxpayers' dollars to run all the services out there. So we've, we've got to focus on that. One of our big areas this year as we look at redevelopment, or look at, at our land use, is redeveloping the southern part of Harford County along the Route 40 corridor. There's a a lot of properties that are really underdeveloped. They're older properties that need to be redeveloped, relooked at, um, re re repurposed. So we, we want to step back in and look at that and help those landowners to make better use, maximize use of those properties. And Shane, that's where you come in. It, it sounds simple, planning and zoning, but there's a lot more than planning and zoning. Tell us a little overview of your, your fairly large uh, area of responsibility. Correct. Land use has a lot of different varying responsibilities. And our department is really broke up into three sections. The first section is the current planning section, which does the day-to-day -day operations of the department. So that's reviewing plans, those site plans and subdivision plans that come through our office, as well as permits. And our folks in the permit center are who you see day-to-day, -day, but thankfully these days we also have online portals that allow you to apply for a permit. Right online, it's very easy to do, and you can sign up and see your permit go through the entire process. So that current planning section really is the day-to-day -day functions. And then we have our long-range planning section, and that section really is doing that, looking at long-range planning, working on master plans or other ancillary plans that support the master plan. And it also is where our transportation planning section is, as well as our environmental planning folks and our data and demographic folks. And then the last section of the department is our GIS section, and that stands for Geographic Information Systems. And that is really the folks that are out there processing data and making maps and really doing a great job with different types of creative maps and creatively displaying data that we can put on our website and the county can use in documents or any other type of uh, information needs that we have to put out to the public and to the press. Mr. Casley, when we see the bulldozers, we see the bobcats, yeah. we say, oh, it's <clears throat> starting. Right. But it's actually the end of the process. That's right. There's a lot that comes before the actual construction. Talk a little bit yeah. how where it all begins. Sure, that's right. And that's, that's with the, the planning and zoning process. And, and 
folks have to recognize, and that's what we're, we're going through now. We, we develop our, our zoning maps where we actually designate whether the property is agricultural property or residential, business, high density residential, big business, small business, commercial, et cetera. Um, and once that's done, and the county council approves those, once that's done, then we don't really, ha I don't have an ability to say, well, no, we don't want to build those apartments there. And what you see, I mean, for example, you see people see apartments going up now, and, and, and they're alarmed, and they say, you know, why did you approve that? That was approved by prior administrations. We didn't, that, this stuff was done years, approved years ago. Um, so it's important that the, the folks pay attention now, and we've got a process, and they'll see, we'll talk about it more here, hopefully, uh, just about, uh, they need to become involved at this stage as we're doing the land use. Uh, and that's the time where you step up and say, hey, that doesn't make sense, or I have a problem with that. Have your voices heard, come see the county council, follow us, uh, because again, once, once it's been zoned, I can't say to a landowner, oh, I would rather you not build those, those apartments on that property. They say, wait, it's been zoned. It's zoned for high density residential, and my hands are tied. So now's the time to get involved. And speaking of zoning, if I were you, Shane, the three words that would keep me awake at night would be comprehensive zoning review. And I know that's a huge process. Tell the folks how often you have to do it and what's involved in it. Sure. That. Well, it doesn't keep me up at night because, <laughs> believe it or not, I really enjoy that process. And a lot of people don't like it, but uh, I do enjoy it, and I do enjoy interfacing with the public as we go through that process. The county code requires that comprehensive rezoning happen every eight years. Now, that doesn't mean we have to wait every eight years. A county executive or a county council could decide to start a comprehensive rezoning at any time, but typically it's on that eight-year time frame. And so we'll be beginning that process, and we'll start taking applications on Monday, June 3rd, and we'll take applications for two months. And a property owner can come into their, our office and submit that application, and then it will go through the review process. And by code, we're required to have that process done within 12 months of accepting the first application. And then once we get done with our work on our side of the street, reviewing all those applications and looking at all the factors that influence comprehensive zoning on any given parcel, whether it be transportation, agricultural preservation, environmental issues, schools, things like that that we review. Once we do that, we package all that up with all the assessments of each property, and then we send that to the county council. And then the county council will also have public hearings. We, we will also have hearings or meetings for the planning advisory board who also reviews these requests and makes recommendations. So we'll package all that up at the end and then we send that to the county council who ultimately determines whether or not a property will be rezoned. And Mr. Castley, citizens can participate in all this, sure. but only if they know how. how yeah. What's your advice to citizens about how they can keep up with all this? Sure. So again, I'm committed to a transparent process, a simple process that's easy to follow. <clears throat> when, the, when someone submits a property to be rezoned, uh, Shane's department goes out and puts a fairly large sign right on the road, right on the public road, where everybody can see that this has been proposed for rezoning. And each of those signs has a QR code. So if you're in an, a, an area that you have an interest and you see one of these rezoning signs go up, you can just take your, your phone over there, scan the QR code. It'll take you to our webpage. And the county website will have a map of the properties. Uh, it'll it'll uh, uh, give you a log of the request and the information on that tells you when the public meetings are, and give you just different quest, you know, response to frequently asked questions about the zoning process. And, and you can really, you know, you can know everything. Just scan that, it all comes up. It's a pr very transparent. We've got a great uh, website out there to help people through it. And Shane, if I am a landowner <clears throat> and I want to do just what the county executive said, start, it starts with planning and zoning, coming to you guys and saying, here's my property, this is what I want to do. Is, it, is, it that how, is that how it starts? That's correct. In a lot of instances, those property owners will come in to meet with us before submitting an application, and we welcome that. We would rather advise that property owner as to what we think about their potential application before they come in so that they can make an educated guess on whether or not they want to spend that $800 to submit the application. And we'll walk them through the whole process and get them started, and we'll help them with filling out their application. In many instances, an attorney will represent a property owner and submit the application on their behalf. But yes, they come in, and we walk them through the whole process. And one of the great things about what we're doing and what we did last time was the transparency the county executive spoke of. We use what's called a development tracker for our day-to-day -day projects that come through the Development Advisory Committee, but we also use that for our comprehensive zoning review as well, which is really nice. In many years ago, a property owner or a citizen would have to come into the county and request files, and we'd have to 
you know, Xerox them and, and give them and charge them a fee to uh, get those Xerox copies, where now they can just go online from the comfort of their own home, their phone, pull up the application that was submitted on any given property, and all the information is there and available to them. There's nothing that we withhold, so they can take a look at it, process it, and be informed that when they come to the public meetings or the public hearings, they're very well informed on those properties and they can ask the questions or make their comments on those properties. Much easier than in the old days in Correct. that regard. The Development Advisory Committee, you mentioned that. Talk a little bit more about who those folks are. Sure. So the Development Advisory Committee, as the county executive suggested, is sort of is the last piece of the puzzle when you go through the land use process, the land use development process. The actual end is, is getting the building permit and getting a UNO to occupy a building or a residence. But the Development Advisory Committee, we do not take any plans or projects through the Development Advisory Committee unless they are a permitted use or unless they've received special approvals such as special exceptions uh, from the Board of Appeals. So you have to be permitted in order to start that process. There are many things that go into that before we even receive a plan. There are environmental reviews. We require what's called a forest stand delineation to evaluate forest resources on the property. That's required by the state. We have adopted our own local Forest Conservation Act, which is part of our zoning code. So we look at that first. And then also we require, in certain instances, depending on what traffic will be generated by that development, we'll require a traffic impact analysis. And that traffic impact analysis takes a look at intersections that we are requiring to be studied based on certain factors. So before we even receive a plan through the Development Advisory Committee, those things are evaluated. And then the Development Advisory Committee is really a technical review committee. Hartford County is different than most jurisdictions, maybe in all of the state, in that we don't have a planning commission. We have a technical review committee, which is that DAC, or Development Advisory Committee. And it's made up of members from different agencies in the county and the state that review the plans and provide their comments at that time. It's not an <coughs> approval committee in the sense that nobody raises their hand at the end and votes on the plan. It's just basically looking at the technical merits of that plan. And if a property owner or a developer meets the requirements of the zoning code and all the requirements of the other agencies, whether they be county, state, or federal, then we're obligated to issue either a preliminary subdivision plan approval or a site plan approval for that project which then sets out the path for them to move forward with their project to get to grading permits and building permits. It's a really quite a process. It is. Mr. Castley, there are a lot of great surprises in life, but one that's not a great surprise is learning that there's a major development that's right. going to happen right near where you live or work. Right. What's your advice to people how they can yeah. stay ahead of that? Sure. So <clears throat> we're in the part of the process now, and we talked earlier about the comprehensive rezoning and the, the properties have signs on the comprehensive rezoning process, and it links into our, our county system. <clears throat> what you're talking now is that's done, it's been rezoned or it's zoned, and now someone comes in to put, it was zoned for housing, and they're putting housing on there. But the, the, there will be, again, a sign on the property. Nearby neighbors will be notified in writing, sign on the property, uh, again, with the QR code, you can go to the, those signs. We have a track it app, we call it for Harford County, and that provides folks with a, a, a map of the property, shows you the project details, um, and, and when the public meetings are with the information. So when you see one of these, again, it gets right back to you, when you see that sign, that's when you wanna come out. Hopefully you came out for the rezoning first, and you, you made your points now, but now you're, you're, it's been zoned, and now you're coming out to review that project. Uh, it, there's, there's a process, folks can come out, they can track everything, what's going on. And I can't overstate the importance of what the point Shane made earlier is, this stuff is available online. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago, you had to take time off from work, come into the county office building during the regular hours of business, request files on photocopy. You can do this on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. in your own home and call all this stuff up. So it's, it's a great process. That's amazing. What's a typical zoning violation, Shane? I'm sure you deal with violations uh, regularly, hopefully not too often, but what's a typical violation and what, uh, how do you report, if you're assistant, how do you report what you suspect is a violation? Sure. So this time of year, it's grass complaints. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the grass code falls under Department of Public Works, but many years ago, they gave it to planning and zoning. <laughs> And we reluctantly continue to do that part of the code for them, but it just makes sense that we have it under our department. So typically this time of year, we're seeing a lot of grass complaints in subdivisions where the grass is over 12 inches and we're asked to go out and take a look at that. 
We generally work on complaints. So if someone calls the county, they can call anonymously. We don't take their name. And they can make a complaint, and they'll tell us what their complaint is. And then we have zoning inspectors that go out and investigate that complaint. And if we find that there is cause, we will then send them a letter and warn them of the violation and ask them to correct that violation. And if they don't, then there are other processes that we can use, such as civil citations, to try to gain compliance from that property owner. Fair to say it's not hugely common for this to happen, that they actually get violation notices, or is it common? Well, it's not common yet because we just, the county council adopted uh, civil citations, and that's the process that we are going through now. So we're just starting to use civil citations to try to gain compliance. But yes, it's one of the most challenging jobs in the department because you're dealing with folks that uh, may not understand the zoning code, may not understand why they have an infraction or a violation of the zoning code. So you're trying to work with them first to gain compliance. In some cases, they may never be able to gain compliance. So then it's trying to be empathetic, trying to work with them to get them where, do they, where they need to be so that we can be happy that the violation has been abated. And of course, if there's any life health safety issues, we want to make sure that those have been abated and that's not a nuisance to the community. I know Ms. Castley loves these maps, and I do too. I love the idea of being able to do, do the map searching yeah. from your living room or whatever. Talk a little bit more about what's online, specifically map-wise, and how people can find it. Sure. We have a ton of maps that are online. Some of them were taken from our previous master plan, but they can easily be downloaded as a PDF and used anywhere. We have maps that look at anything from as simple as councilmanic districts to our green infrastructure plan, which we did at one of these episodes on back in mm -hmm. 2018. We have all kinds of different data that's available. That data is freely available to anybody that wants to download it. So there may be folks at consulting firms or maybe there's folks out there, citizens that have GIS ability, and they can take that data and make maps from it or make spreadsheets from it and find anything they need on that, to, whether they're looking at population statistics, whether they're looking at building permits and what we received or any number or host of different things that we have available that they can explore and use that data to assist them. Mr. Castley, we've talked many times. Uh, I know that your heart is uh, really beats for preserving farmland where applicable. Yeah. Why is that so important to you? And, and what, is you, what do you see happening now that you've been in office for sure. quite some time now? Well, look, our local farms, first of all, are an essential part of our economy. Uh, you look at that beautiful field of corn out there, uh, that meant somebody had to purchase, sell, sell the tractor and all the equipment that's there. They had to, uh, you have the transaction to buy the seed, the fertilizer, to, to harvest it, to, the selling, the, the trucks to come in for the harvesting. It's a huge commercial operation. This is not just simple, one, not a simple matter of one farmer just living, old McDonald living out there milking the cows. This is really a, a, a lot of economic activity involved in that. But beyond that, uh, our farms uh, in Hartford County provide us with locally grown food options for, for a, a variety of uh, you know, health benefits and, and just some, some really great uh, alternatives. And, and that's also critical to food security. We saw that in COVID. We saw how when the supply chains broke down, uh, the, the local food was there to, 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 to provide. And again, just a large number of, of, of citizens that, that rely upon the farms. And look beyond that, it's an awesome way of life. Uh, you look at the family farms and what, what that means, how many folks come up and benefit from, from those farms with the, 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 the farm tours and, and the like, uh, or many farm breweries and things. So it, it also is a great way to pre just preserve open spaces in Hartford County. It's tough to just buy open spaces and let them sit there. It's a whole lot cheaper to leave them in agriculture so they can be productive and pay for themselves. So many, many benefits um, to, to, con to continuing uh, um, the, 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 our ag preservation. And, and I, for me, uh, you, you look at um, the folks, we still have folks wanting to go into agriculture, but also people wanting to, to sustain their family farms. And what happens is, is we, we've got now as development expands, it chews up that agricultural land. And we've got to be careful because uh, even just a few houses on 100 acres can substantially reduce the available, the amount of, uh, of, of agriculturally available f of farmland. So we've got to make a conscious effort to, to sustain, you know, steer development 
away from those existing farmlands and, and you know, co concentrate them in, in areas that, that don't chew up ag, ag land. Um, so it's just a, a strong agricultural preservation program is essential if we're going to continue to do farming to, in, in the future in Hartford County. And Shane, how does that program work briefly? How does it work if I want to preserve my land? What do I do? Sure. Our agri -pre agricultural preservation folks in the Department of Planning and Zoning, Bill Amos and Jen Wilson, do an excellent job with outreach to the community. And they've had some events recently and we'll have some events coming up. But they also go out to property owners and ask them if they would like to en enroll in one of the programs, apply to one of the programs. Oftentimes people will come into our department asking about that. That's how it gets started. And then we'll have that conversation with them and then they go through the process of determining which of those programs is best for them. And it could be anything from the MALF program, which is a state program, the Maryland Agricultural Land Preserva Preservation Foundation. And then there's the Maryland Environmental Trust and also rural legacy programs that have monies that can be used to purchase those development rights or extinguish those development rights on those property and permanently preserve them. Our program has been very successful over the years with approximately 65,000 acres that have been preserved with a goal right now in the master plan of 75,000. And each year we've been averaging about 800 acres preserved in various programs. And it's been very successful. Uh, we will be losing Bill Amos to retirement who has done an excellent job in agricultural preservation and is one of the leading reasons why we are in the place we are with agricultural preservation and one of the leaders in the country in ag preservation. And Mr. Mr. County Executive, you also proposed some changes to make it even stronger, did you not? Well, actually, I mean, those predated me, and I'll get, jump right back in the praising Bill Amos because I think he gets a lot of credit for those changes. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he's been a leader, as Shane said. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the changes were intended to really a lot, the, the law was sort of restrictive. You'd have farms that just didn't simply qualify under the, the restrictions. So the, the changes that, that, that Bill really spearheaded and with some other folks in the ag community um, in a really collaborative process that brought in people from all, all sectors, um, uh, it, it, it allowed for us to include more zoning. Does it, so if you had a piece of property that might be uh, zoned, not agriculture, but you wanted to preserve it, you were willing to take it as ag, uh, as, as preserver for agriculture, even though it had already been rezoned for, say, residential, you, you could still qualify for that. It reduced the, the minimum size uh, from 50 down to 20 acres because maybe you have a 100-acre farm, but we can add two 20-acre parcels onto that, make it a 140-acre farm. So, you know, allowed, allowed for that. Gave us bonus payments for, for land that was more threatened with residential development, preserve that farm first. It adds uh, forest lands, streams, and the like in, into the, the, the ranking system to preserve some of that. Uh, uh, in, includes a bunch of some other factors, and uh, it, it just really makes this, this whole process uh, a, a more flexible and beneficial to our whole goal of preserving farmland. And Shane, you also want to preserve historical properties. Talk about the pre preserving of historical properties as well as the farmland. That's very important to the county as well. We have a lot of historic resources in the county that we are looking to preserve. And we're looking at different ways to modify the zoning code in the future to bring more properties into the historic preservation program, not only just to protect them, but also to promote them. We have a wealth of history that goes back many hundreds of years in this county. And it is really essential to promote them for many different reasons, especially for tourism, and to bring people to our county to see what we have to offer in, what, in the way of historic resources and also just to drive the economy. There is many economic benefits to bringing people to the county and sharing our cultural and historic resources with those folks. I know you're big on history. This is a big year. Harford County is 250 Absolutely. years old. Bel Air is 150 years old. Yeah. And you've really tried to get your folks involved, all county uh, employees yeah. involved in these celebrations, right? Yeah. yeah they, they, they've done a great job. You know, Shane and I were just sitting here before this talking about some preservation projects that we're both working on to try to honor. Yeah, you know, we've got the, the history of the Bush Declaration, the anniversary of that. We've got the anniversary of, of Lafayette's visit to, to Harford and Cecil counties. Uh, but we we uh, really came forward with a theme about you know preserving our past for the for the next generation. Uh, and the county sponsored floats and 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 the like in in our uh, we did a Harford 250 booth that traveled the state for different purposes and floats in the Fourth of July parades to 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 
you know, accentuate or, or drive home the point of our, the importance of our history. So these are, yeah, this is, it's, I'm really honored for me, for somebody whose family's been a part of this county for over 200 years, that I, I'm county executive at the, the year of these uh, critical anniversaries for our county. I'm very, very proud of that. So how can citizens, what's the easiest way for citizens to find out about planning and zoning? It's probably a website, I'm sure, but what's the best way, uh, Shane, for you, for our citizens to keep up with these things? Sure. The best way is really to go on the county's website and you can sign up for our Track It app. When it comes to development, you can have emails sent to your email inbox regularly that tell you what is happening with certain projects, what projects have come in and are going to go through the Development Advisory Committee process. So that's the best way to really stay on top of what's happening. There are all kinds of resources on our web page, but one of the things that I will really say is the best thing to do is to call us. Unfortunately, we see on Facebook and other social media platforms a lot of misinformation. And really that misinformation is not necessary. All you need to do is call the Department of Planning and Zoning. You can contact me, you can email me, you can email my staff. We're willing and ready to discuss any questions that you may have about development that's happening in the area, any plans that we're working on, master plans, comprehensive plans. The best thing really is to contact us and reach out to us directly. I often say it's funny, I know before anybody else, or, or the web knows before anybody else when a certain project's going to open, and, and I see that and I say, I didn't even know that. So, <laughs> so people will say, yeah, this, this is going to open on such and such a date when we haven't even received a plan yet. So that's what, that's what I would say is those people should really contact us and we'll tell them exactly what they need to know. Mr. Cassidy, bottom line, when you drive through the roads in Harford County, you see quite a place with a variety of different land uses, and mm -hmm. you just love yeah. the fact that we're keeping it preserved, but we're also growing. You, you got it, Mark. It's, it's a great county. Uh, we got a great administration, folks like Shane working for us every day uh, to help us to, to both make build for the future, but also preserve what we've got. And it's, it's an honor for me to have these folks working with me. Well, it's an honor to have you both here today. Thank you both for Thank being you. here today. A very interesting discussion, and we appreciate all that you do, sir. And Thank of course, you, all you do, Shane. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching Inside Harford County, airing exclusively on Harford TV. Please join us again next month on behalf of our wonderful technical crew here and our production team. I'm Mark Vernarelli. Thanks for watching.